Uh, we're now going to hear from Matthew Sing, Sing, Singjia. He's a system administrator and developer and a scout leader and, o- and an Open Knowledge Australian ambassador. He's been playing with Linux for over 10 years and he's always trying to learn about all the things open. As of July this year, his day job involves developing and maintaining a Linux-based situation for computers for inmate use in prison. He's also a bash expert and have plenty of opinions on your shell code, but not mine because there isn't any. <laughs> he thinks all shell code is terrible, but will co- settle for code which is less. He, he's often running an open knowledge Melbourne event or facilitating 11 to 12 year olds running around the bush and hopefully they're having fun somewhere. So Matthew is going to tell us something about OpenStreetMap. Thank you. Hi everyone. So yeah, I'm Matt. Um, this is my talk. It's going to be a fairly short talk. Um, I think that it's the last time we did this, it worked really well to give people plenty of time for questions and to ask for demos on stuff. So um, any questions, shoot them right at me um, and we'll get through it. So yeah, this is me. Um, I do stuff with Linux. I put computers in prisons. Um, I like maps, maps are cool, um, and I help out with open knowledge events, I helped out with Health Hack this weekend, and I helped out at GovHack a couple months ago, so it's all good. I do lots of things, I don't know how I find time for it all. Um, but you're here to hear about OpenStreetMap, so what is OpenStreetMap? Well, this here is the OpenStreetMap web interface. Um, OpenStreetMap is this, and it's this which is a mobile application that uses OpenStreetMap data. And this is a different theme for OpenStreetMap. And this is a slightly garish scheme for OpenStreetMap, which we designed last year as part of Open Knowledge Melbourne, um, which isn't published anymore because um, the tile server was decommissioned. But there is a different set of garish tiles. So this hipster map was something that we designed um, I thought, oh, you know, we want to do a bit of a hack event just to have some fun. And um, so we said, all right, well, let's design a really ugly scheme and call it the hipster map. And we'll put on these really niche locations that are available around Melbourne that all the hipsters go to. And then the hipsters won't go to them anymore because they'll be on a map and everybody else will want to go. Um, and so we, you can, we can do cool things with it. So one of the things that we did, for example, is you can see, um, you can see, uh, you may, may not be able to see, um, but um, until you zoom right in, you can't see all the main roads. So you can only, you can only see all the, all the little alleyways, which is, of course, what the hipsters would use to get to these, these you know, venues, until you zoom all the way in, and then you can actually work out you know, how to get between the, you know, between the roads. Uh, so we did that. Um, this is also an OpenStreetMap representation. This is um, some of the XML code that's used to represent data internally um, when, when you do an export of it. Um, you can see that it's got things, you know, actually I was gonna, I'll go into the detail about that later on. But this is a thing, this is OpenStreetMap. It's, you know, that's an entire, that is a single item in OpenStreetMap. That's a, a, an object um, that describes, what was it describing? Is that the, it's the State Library of Victoria. And that's all the information that they've got in OpenStreetMap about the State Library. Um, so what is it? It's hosted at OpenStreetMap.org. Um, you could consider it the Wikipedia of Google Maps um, in that it's a lot more open, um, it's user contributed, um, and it's not hosted by a big corporation. Um, it's got a worldwide map database, um, and it's mostly unrestricted use. Uh, you know, it used to be Creative Commons licensed. Now they have their own license, the open I forget the name of the license, but it's an open mapping license that they've created specifically for this purpose, which lets you do pretty much what you like. <clears throat> um, so you can use it for trip routing. You can download it onto your phone um, so that you've got offline access to your maps, um, which is really great when you're like in a different country and you don't have a whole lot of mobile data. I found that that was really useful when I went to, um, to New Zealand. Uh, and it's not a lot of... It's fairly small as well, so I mean, for Australia, I think it was 350 meg for all of, all of Australia's um, roads. And you just download it and you use it on the app. Um, you can also store it in your handheld GPS if you go, you know, cycling or hiking. Uh, and that'll, you know, you can convert it to a Garmin GPS format and various other formats. Um, you can create custom map tiles, which I'll come back to later. 
uh, but that's kind of goes back to the hipster map where we've styled the map the way we want. Uh, and you can build some pretty advanced mapping websites. Um, it's not usually used in isolation. It's used for you know, big things. It's used by um, Foursquare, I think. Um, I forget who else. A lot of big, big companies use OpenStreetMap. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, if your area is poorly mapped, you can fix it. You can kind of do that with Google as well, but I've heard some people say that it's a bit difficult to get trainers approved and there are complications with it. But OpenStreetMap, you make your change, you, you can use their web-based editor. Uh, this one's called ID. They've got a couple of other editors as well. There's uh, one called Potlatch, which is, I think it's written in Flash, uh, so I don't use it. Um, you can also use an offline editor if you like. Um, QGIS will do it. Um, what are some of the other ones? There's uh, Jossum, the Java OpenStreetMap editor which I don't use because it's Java. Um, but the, the, the web-based one is quite good. Um, and can I? No, OK, that's fine. Um, if we've got some time later, I can show you how that works. Uh, but it basically lets you do all the basic edits that you care about. It doesn't do bulk edits. Um, if you want to do that, there are other tools for it. But you can say, all right, oh, this is mislabeled, or this road's not quite right. Hit edit, make the change, put in a small commit message save it. Um, you can, if you create a GPS trace with your handheld GPS, so you, you know, you're going on a hike, you work out that you know, there's this track, you're walking along the track, you, you know, trace the hike so that you can record how far you've gone, and you get back and you realize that that, that area is not mapped on OpenStreetMap, you can import the GPS trace file, and it'll get, um, it can be underlaid onto the map editor and you can trace over it to create a, you know, a proper track for it. Um, you can do a similar thing with a mobile application. Um, so um, Osmand is the one that I use. It's a big, complicated application. Um, I don't really recommend it for um, non-technical users just because it's, there's buttons everywhere. And it's, it's, gotten it's gotten, it has gotten better. It's gotten a lot better. Um, version, is it version 2? It's version 1.9, I think. It's a lot better than it used to be, but it's still very busy, which is a bit of a struggle sometimes. Um, I don't know how I would go if I was learning it from scratch now, but it probably wouldn't be as bad. Um, so you can use that as well, and this, w because it's so fully featured, it'll let you do turn-by-turn -turn navigation, um, GPS traces, um, editing, um, the, whole, the whole lot. It's amazing. Um, you can update maps on paper. Uh, so I found out about this, and in fact, one of the reasons I got into playing around with OpenStreetMap a lot was when I saw Kate Chapman do a talk, uh, do a keynote at uh, LinuxConf AU 2014, uh, and she talked about the humanitarian OpenStreetMap open project, which is a project where they map areas um, that are having natural disasters or are prone to have natural disasters. Um, and they can do live map updates of, you know, oh, this, this area is flooded now, so the roads are inaccessible. Um, and they were doing a lot of this in places like Jakarta, where they didn't have a lot of computer access. So this website, Field Papers, lets you do things like print out a map of an area on real dead tree paper, and you, you take it and you go for a walk, and you say, oh, this, this building's not there anymore, or this one's mislabeled, or this track's not quite right, and you, you literally draw on the sheet what the changes are, and you can then, if I can, oh, it's actually, that's fairly big there. So down in the corner, you can see there's a QR code. So you, once, you, once you've drawn on your map, you take it back to headquarters, to your office, or whatever. You take a photo of it, or you scan it, and using the QR code in the corner, and the, they're a bit difficult to see, perhaps, but there are positioning dots around the, the edges, little black and white dots. Those are used to geolocate the map as an underlay on OpenStreetMap again, so you can trace over, do, do an electron, you know, digital trace over the handwritten notes that you've made and make edits that way, which was really, really useful for this project. Um, so that's a cool thing. Um, custom map tiles, which I said I would get back to. I'm back. Uh, so there are a whole lot of different sets of tiles available here, but you can make as many as you like. So what have we got? We've got 
that's not going to matter that one. Okay. So on the left here, we've got um, map, map quest, make a set of map tiles. So that's um, map, map quest do mapping, and they do a lot of stuff with OpenStreetMap. They're pretty cool. Uh, and then top middle, we've got the humanitarian map, which has got a, it's got different features highlighted. Uh, on the top right, we've got the transport app, uh, transport map, which is focuses on transport routes and you know, tram routes and train routes and whatever. Bottom left, we've got um, uh, an open, the OpenStreetMap.org open street cycle map, which has got optimized for cycle routes and oh yeah, there's a cycle track here or whatever. Uh, bottom middle is the standard OpenStreetMap style, which is functional but not particularly pretty. But you know, you live with it. And then on the right um, is uh, a map style for, from cycletour.org, which uh, a friend of mine wrote, um, and he does cycle touring around Victoria and wanted something that was easy for him to see cycle tracks in the bush. And so that's what he uses there. Um, so that's a cool thing. Uh, next, we've got uh, arbitrary attributes. So you can open street map works. You, know, you can store data in XML. Um, and each, so that it's got uh, three primitives, three, three primitive objects. It's got a point. Um, it's got lines, which are collect a collection of directed points. And it's got polygons, which is a collection of lines you know, joined. Um, each of those items can have attributes associated with it. You can see here that we've got a whole lot of tags associated with uh, the state library. Address city, address house number, address postcode. Um, those tag names are arbitrary. You can pick whatever you like. Um, it kind of open street and kind of works a bit on a de facto standard um, where you just, you know, you realize that a lot of people are using this tag, so that's the, the tag that my application is going to use when it recognizes a road, for example. Ah, you know, oh, they're all using you know, address street. OK, well, that's what I will use to determine the street name. Um, also, if we go further down, you can see that the name has got uh, a whole lot of modifiers on it. So there's name, and then there's name colon FR for you know, France. So you can, have, you, know, you can internationalize it. Um, I'm not sure whether any applications in, um, use those labels, uh, use those, those modifiers for other labels. For example, whether you can have street, nam street names in different languages, but I'm sure you can do it, and you can just put the name there and then just have your app talk to it. Um, what else have we got? We've got uh, Tile Mill. I'm talking about Tile Mill tomorrow. It should come. It's going to be awesome. Um, tile Mill is a cartography application. Uh, it's partly what we used for the hipster map of Melbourne. Uh, and it basically lets you say, OK, I've got some map data underneath. I want to display um, main roads and nothing else. Or I only want to display the, you know, the, the little laneways. Um, and I want to color it like this. And I want to have nice big borders around, I don't know, train stations. Um, you can put other, you can add other data onto it. So you can say, all right, um, this this map, for example, which is part of what I'm going to be using as a tutorial tomorrow, um, the little grey dots are police stations, and the tiny little orange dots are locations of Skyhooks concerts. Um, and you can put whatever you like in there, and then you can export that data um, and host it and use it as a as a map underlay for any website you like using um, a framework like uh, Leaflet. So Leaflet is a JavaScript li library for displaying maps online. Um, it's used by lots and lots of things. It's used by OpenStreetMap. It's used by, um, it's what's used by, who did I say before? Big company, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, it's really, really flexible. Uh, also, we've got CartoDB, which lets you do some rather more fancy things with, um, it doesn't actually edit the map tiles underneath. But you can specify your own base layer. So you could create a base layer in TileMill and say, all right, I want to use that base layer for CartoDB. And you can import data into CartoDB and say, all right, I want to display all these points on this map. And it's got cool stuff. You know, Everybody loves the heat maps. It does heat maps. So you can say, there are all these dots over here, and it's red, and there are not many dots over here. So this is you know, a little dark blue kind of color. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff with that. And you can have interactive maps. So you can click on something, and it'll tell you information about it. Um, 
kind of like what Google does now with um, Google Maps. Um, speaking of which, uh, Google track you. You know, I'd rather not have Google. I don't. I don't use any Google apps on my phone. I don't really want them knowing where I live. Um, it kind of works that out. Um, exporting large map seg segments from Google are difficult. If you want to export a large map segment from OpenStreetMap, depending on what format you want, you can say, give me an SVG of all of Melbourne, please, um, at a given resolution, and it'll set the zoom level for you so that you've got all the information that you care about. Um, Google Maps is, I don't know whether it's impossible, but it's difficult to use offline or on your GPS. Um, and I've not seen any ways to create custom map tiles for it. Um, of course, it's restricted use. You can't just go and use, um, use Google data on your website without attribution. Um, I believe it's still difficult to get edits removed. I'm not really sure. I haven't had a look recently, but it didn't seem particularly user friendly. Um, so and any edits you do, you're basically giving them to Google and saying, here, take them, just go and you know, lock them up into your little box and you know, require people to agree to license agreements to use them and whatever. Whereas with OpenStreetMap, can, people can do whatever they like. Um, and basically, that concludes my summary of OpenStreetMap. So does anybody want me to demo any particular stuff or do I have, have questions? Yep. I can repeat it. Mm -hmm. And all of the stuff was around my house. And I thought straight away, oh crap, I don't want the whole internet to know where I live versus what where I live, so I create a pseudo anonymous account to contribute instead. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, so the, the, the statement was if you're making edits on Google Maps, uh, on, on OpenStreetMap, you know, if you create a username that you use for everything and you make edits around your house, people are kind of going to work out where you live based on the fact that your edits are public. That's true. Um, I hadn't really thought about that, but certainly you can create, you know, they, they, they don't care what your username is. You can create a username of whatever you like. And, you know, I mean, there's, um, there's a, a guy in Melbourne named Alex on the bus. I have no idea who Alex on the bus is, but he's made lots and lots and lots and lots of edits across Australia. It's amazing. I, I believe he, like, I think a friend of mine said that he commutes from Geelong to Melbourne each day and spends his trip, his train trip editing Google, uh, OpenStreetMap. So, yeah, I suppose, you're right, you can be tracked based on the fact that, you're, um, that you're using a username that is associated with you and you're editing stuff in your local area. But you can work around it fairly trivially. It's just something that you've got to be mindful of, I guess. So the question was, are, are updates destructive or are, is history kept? History is kept. Um, it works kind of like a version control system. It's, it's got a hot, full history of change sets. Um, I haven't investigated a solution to say, show me the state of the map at this date. There must be a thing. There has to be, but I haven't looked at it. Um, and that would be really cool to look at. I know that the OpenStreetMap wiki has got like um, I think uh, there's a Melbourne page, for example, and I think it's, it's got, or at least an Australia page, that shows at least screenshots of this is how OpenStreetMap looked then and this is how it looks now. So I don't know whether those were just taken at the times or whether somebody's retroactively gone back and said, show me the data as at this point. Um, but I'm sure you can do it, and the data is all, is all there. Anything else? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, can you please uh, illuminate the current sort of communities? I'm not sure if you're familiar with all of the community you know with them, of course, but their current attitude towards data imports. Because if you put your open knowledge hat on, there's a lot of cool address data coming out from councils, but I know there's also some tension between a lot of the OpenStreetMap community and importing huge amounts of data, which might destroy hand-created data that somebody yeah. has you know, put effort in to create. I haven't had the opportunity to look into it a whole lot. Um, I am led to believe that if you want to do a large input, you, input you've got to, you, you can't just do it. Like, it, it'll get rejected. Um, but 
if you, I believe you can work with them and say, look, here's the data. It's from the city council. It is authoritative data. Let's see what we can do about this. I've not tried to do it myself, so I'm not exactly sure how much uh, pushback you get from that. Um, certainly, if there's no data there, then I'm sure they'd say, eh, give, it, give us all of the data. But if there is data, I'm not sure how they'd handle that. And I also think that it could be a bit of a nightmare to work out how much of the data to throw away so that you don't get you know, duplicates and stuff. Um, it sounds like a little bit of a nightmare, but it would be an interesting problem, but I haven't investigated it. Kind of, excuse me. Sorry, which kind of makes me think: uh, Is there any interest in the OpenStreetMap community in working with local organisations uh, for things like um, mapping power lines? Uh, that's a that that stuff that you could someone could put in as an overlay, um, or you know where fibre or uh, HFC goes, or um, all sorts of utilities, which are, and, and I, because I know one of the nice things that I find in OpenStreetMap is the number of places that have walking paths yeah. marked that you don't find easily on Google Maps and other mapping systems. So, is there, are you sort of looking at working with local providers? Um, so, there are several parts to that question. Firstly, um, I'm not sure whether you are aware, but OpenStreetMap Open does have power lines and stuff mapped on it. Um, I found one at, you know, uh, about a year back. Like, what is this line that's parallel to this street? And I, I, had, I had to go into edit mode to, to look at it because the default OpenStreetMap style shows there's a great line there but doesn't, doesn't so describe it. Um, and I went into edit mode and I clicked on it and said, oh, yeah, this is a power line. It's got 50,000 volts going through it and it's got four cables. Cool, that's nice. I wonder. I, I'd, I'd like to know who put that there. Like, what, what kind of position you'd have to be in to say, I am authoritative enough that I can kind of, I know this information, and also I know about OpenStreetMap that I can put it in. Um, certainly, um, as Maya was saying earlier this morning, we've got, um, as part of Open Knowledge, we've got uh, opencouncildata.org, where we are encouraging councils to publish data on various things. Um, and in some ways kind of shaming them into doing so by, um, by saying, hey, look, here is a, a map of all of the trees, you know, that city councils have got in Victoria, and, like, nine city councils have got trees mapped in, in here, and you should, you should join in. Um, that data isn't getting pushed back into OpenStreetMap. I mean, for example, for the, for the tree data in, in particular, trees are going to change all the time. They're going to get cut down. They're going to get, you know, planted. So putting that kind of data into OpenStreetMap isn't necessarily viable or even necessarily all that useful. Um, data like, like street uh, power lines and whatever would be probably more consistent and more useful. Um, I haven't investigated in great detail the communities around, you know, I think that there is a, a, an OpenStreetMap, an actual like OpenStreetMap editing community in Melbourne that I haven't really gone and spent a lot of time with. Um, but I don't know if there's much direct interaction between councils and the OpenStreetMap editors. Certainly, we try to get a lot, of, a lot of council data and publish it so that it can get overlaid on OpenStreetMap, but actually putting it into the OpenStreetMap database is not something that I've done a whole lot of investigation into. It's, you certainly could, though. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Um, I was quite interested in uh, you mentioning you could go to New Zealand um, and you don't have any data, but you can still use. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, can you just uh, go into slightly more detail about, you know, whether that was a phone or a GPS device, and, and how you, what sort of format the maps were exported into? Sure. Uh, so to facilitate um, that one. Thank you. So, if I where did I hide it? That's not it. It must be down here. I know. Disappeared off the face of the earth. Hey, that's it. So, this is the app that I use. Um, Osman is an open source application available for Android. Um, I think that maybe they've got a GitHub repo for iOS, but I think it's well and truly dead and not functional at all. 
Um, they have their own application, I think is written in Java, uh, that exports OpenStreetMap data in a different format that is used by this application. Um, so yeah, you, 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 and they also host um, data for each country. So um, within the application, you can say, go and give me the data for New Zealand. It'll download it from their servers. New Zealand was probably 200 meg. Um, downloads it and just uses it. And it's, um, I don't think, it, it's not raster tiles. It's actually, it's a, a vector map. So you can just you know, zoom in as far as you like. And um, it's got points of interest. So you can say, in this area, find me pumps. Uh, and it'll you know, list them all, and you can go to them and actually look at the OpenStreetMap metadata as well as just look at the visual representation of the map. Um, so you've got, you've got two options of either you can get the data from them directly uh, uh, you know, in the right format, or you can use their tool to convert it. I have an investigator converting it myself because it's already there, and it sounded like a, a lot of work, and I'm busy. Does that answer your question? Um, so when it comes to GPS stuff, uh, GPS. Uh, if you have a look at the OpenStreetMap wiki, which better be the first link, that'll do. In your own time, it's okay. I've got all all day. Um, there is there are tools that will allow, allow you to export OpenStreetMap data for various GPSs. Um, Garmin, the Garmin GPS format I think is fairly fairly standard. So this is you know how to get OpenStreetMap on your Garmin unit. Um, there are various tools available for it, uh, and I believe if we just do a search for GPS, um, it'll probably have information for various other units as well. But Um, oh, so for, for, for um, car GPSs, yes, I believe so. Um, a lot of GPSs, I believe, are probably... You'd have to, you know, jailbreak them and do, and do some fancy stuff for them to... You know, if, if like, you couldn't buy a TomTom -tom off the shelf and say, I want to put OpenStreetMap data in there. Probably. I haven't tried because I have my phone and it does turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Um, but... I would expect that it would be a little bit of effort. But I don't, it certainly wouldn't be impossible, and I'm sure that there are people who have done it. Check, check the wiki. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So for the recording, that's there's a tool called what was it called? What was it called? Make GMAP. Make GMAP that converts OpenStreetMap data to, to Garmin format for use by with turn by turn navigation and stuff. Um, yeah, and check out the wiki, the um, OpenStreetMap wiki, because people have solved these problems, not necessarily in the best ways, but they've made an attempt and it, they're, they're a starting point. Um, so it's certainly worth investigating. Uh, give it a that's not the one that I want. That's for tomorrow. That's what I want. Um, so does that answer your question? Yes, cool. Anything else? <coughs> I guess it's a question about what is the scope of OpenStreetMap as compared to taking other data sets and then overlaying them on OpenStreetMap. What should be going onto the map and what should just be... Yeah, and what should be ancillary that? stuff that... Yeah. And... When it comes to things like the trees as well, because, uh, for example, City of Melbourne are the data custodians of all of these trees in Melbourne, it makes sense for them to hold the canonical copy of the data and for people to go and pull it directly from them when they want to see it, rather than for them to have to go and make a bulk edit to OpenStreetMap, edit the data, lose information because they probably won't go and put all the information in there because it's, a lot of it's not necessarily useful to everyone. And then for people to have to go and pull it out of OpenStreetMap. So you're right. It, it really, um, I mean, OpenStreetMap does have fairly limitless scope, potentially, 
because of the fact that you can have arbitrary attributes that may or may not be displayed by the map style that you're using, which is, I think is fantastic. But there is a line that you've got to draw someone and be like, uh, you know what, this data is going to change every five minutes or it's going to be a pain for us to make updates to it. Let's just keep it ourselves, publish it, but keep it ourselves so that people can pull it from us and go and map it. Is there, would there be a way to actually auto or dynamically generate data in OpenStreetMap? A, say, for instance, you wanted to find some shade uh, somewhere with trees. Um, you, could, you could store sort of the type of tree, the, the size of the tree, um, uh, what times of the season they might give shade or not give shade, uh, i.e. a deciduous tree, um, and, and find shade, for example, in Melbourne. Could you generate that sort of information? In that? So that's not directly related to OpenStreetMap, but certainly um, if you look at a tree database, here's one I prepared earlier. That's not how we spell tree. Oh, I don't want double click, go away. Is that right, OpenStreetMap.org, yes. Oh, that's not it either. It's open trees. <laughs> open trees dot org. Everything hates me. T R E E. There it is. Good. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so um, it needs some JavaScript. Is JavaScript enabled? I can't see anything. There it is. No script. You can just. Where's the make everything work button? Oh dear. Okay, so we've got a whole lot of green dots on the map and a cursor that I can't see. There it is. And you can click on these trees and it'll tell you information about them such as temporarily allow all the things. Um, such as where they are, what, um, what species they are, what... Um, now it's even more broken. Let's just go with it. You can click on the tree, it'll tell you what species it is, where it is, how tall it is, or um, uh, depending on the council, uh, diameter at breast height, um, and various other bits of information about the tree, which you could then correlate with um, time of year, uh, and, and the species and say, oh, you know, there's, it's likely, that, and also time of day, it's likely that I'll find tree, find shade here. You could write an app for that, definitely. Um, not, wouldn't need to be tied to OpenStreetMap at all, although you'd probably use, an, you could use OpenStreetMap as an underlay to say, here is how to get to that spot that's got that tree there. Um, sometimes I really hate having no script installed. Um, so that's a thing that you could do, yes. So you could... Locate the heritage listed trees on you. <laughs> yeah, you could, assuming they were open data. Um, yeah. I know that my city council uh, released um, a PDF of, uh, not noteworthy, what, what do they call it? Um, something like noteworthy trees or something. I'm like, cool, that's, that's really, really nice, but a PDF isn't really useful. Um, and I didn't get a chance to go chase them up and say, look, can you... Because these, these people published, this same company, this, this same council published open bin data, uh, which is another one of the websites that we've got that I'm not going to open because JavaScript, um, that basically says here is an open bin data format that, where you can click on, on that. So this is where I live, and it'll say, oh, you have to put your bin out today so that it gets picked up. And oh, today's recycling night. Um, but they, and they published open bin data, but they hadn't published open tree data yet, but we'll get them. Um, so yeah. Anything else? Well, if there's no further questions, we'll conclude this session. We'll thank Matt for his efforts and his information he's given us about OpenStreetMap. Um, and thank you very much. Uh, before I run off, I'm going to slide way, 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 way over here. It'll be um, afternoon tea when we leave here through the, through the room three with the registration desk. This presentation's online. Go have a look at it. It's written in Reveal.js if you think that the slide transitions are totally awesome. Um, check it out. And if you're interested in my tile mill talk tomorrow, uh, which is a, a tutorial about actually how to style maps, um, 
by all means come to that. I think that I, I sent an email out. I don't think that I'll need to give people VMs for them to run. I think that there'll be probably little enough space and therefore few enough people that I can host it myself. But if you want a VM, a copy of a VM, come and talk to me about it. Good, thank you.